Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome from, uh, let's see, we're at kind of a oceanside hilltop out in Big Sur. Nice view, huh? Um, beautiful day out here. So uh, if you're anything like me, you, you've probably been wondering for quite some time, why doesn't our society, um, and when I say society, I include people, government, industrial complex, basically all of us, why, why don't we work harder at um, improving our uh, food and health system so that we can uh, live longer and happier lives. Uh, we've been living longer lives for quite some time now, but they're not higher quality those last few years. So uh, many of us, we live, you know, anywhere from a few to even as much as 10 years in, in a life that's near misery. So, um, I just finished for the second time listening to a book called The Accidental Superpower. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing book, but one of the things that I, I gained from um, this particular book was uh, there are essentially four demographic groups uh, in the U.S. or really any country in the world. Um, and uh, those groups are children, young workers, adult, mature workers, and retirees. Now children, um, of course, are not productive. They do kind of contribute to the economy because their parents have to purchase things. Then you also have to feed and educate them. So um, children are probably a net negative on our economy, but of course they're absolutely essential and necessary because without them, we wouldn't have any future or future economy, future workers or anything of that nature. The next group would be young workers. These are folks from 18 to roughly 45. Uh, these are the most productive workers in many cases, um, but they also tend to um, earn the lowest wages, pay the most amount of taxes because there's a greater numbers of them. Um, they don't save because they're busy raising kids, most of them, or they don't have enough income and they don't typically invest very much, uh, but they are the most productive. And then there are the uh, mature workers these are folks from say 45 to 65 ish. These are the people with the highest incomes. Um, not always the most productive. Um, sometimes they are, but um, they aren't raising children. They have more disposable income. Uh, in most cases, they've actually cut back on their consumption um, and they tend to save and invest more than anybody. So uh, they are, um, you know, looked at very favorably uh, from the um, industrial complex and government standpoint. And then we have retirees. Obviously, those would be folks 65 and older. Um, you know, these are people who uh, are not productive. They're not working, of course. Um, they've already been through those years. They aren't paying a lot into the tax um, kitty. And uh, many of them are insolvent. If they're not insolvent, they're drawing on their pensions and they contribute, um, most of their money is eventually contributed primarily to pharmaceuticals and the medical industry. So um, these are really people who are net negative on uh, the economy. And um, so they contribute the least, literally, because uh, you know you can't, can't say the children contrib contribute the least because they contribute to the future. And this is not my opinion. This is what I read in the book, by the way. Um, so this is not me saying this. This is as best I can paraphrase from the book. But when I put that together with the fact that we've not really made a huge effort to improve our food delivery system, our medical system, our quality of life systems beyond these upper age um, brackets, it sort of starts to make sense in that um, the system, and when I say the system, I'm not saying that there's a group of people out there who designed it. The system kind of designed itself to some degree, but the system is not favorable for you retiring and living another 20 or 30 years. Uh, the system is best off, ironically, or tends to favor you retiring. Most of what wealth you may have is bled off into, like I said, the pharmaceutical and medical industry, and then you die. Um, you know, what is that? For most people, they retire at 65. They're 
usually gone by 72, 73. So you get eight years of retirement. Most of those are probably spent um, unhealthy. So, you know, the system, the way it's set up and the way it functions doesn't really want you to have a 30-year retirement, um, especially if you're not solvent, especially if you don't have an enormous amount of uh, savings or investments to live off of. So um, these things, I have just realized, tend to go hand in hand. And, um, you know, the other option would be for people to work well past the years of 65. So if you work till you're 70, well, then what? You get to live till you're 78. If you live, work until you're, you know, if you live till you're 95, do you have to work until you're 88? Um, you know, that's kind of where things are going, believe it or not. So it's unfortunate. And I think it's time that we consider um, adjustments to it.